if somebody is wondering, what is our favorite marine song? I like that question a lot. Uh, my favorite marine song or a song about the ocean? It actually is more like a song about traveling in general, I guess, but she does mention the ocean quite a bit. Um, it's called Orinoco Flow by Enya. Ooh. It's the one that goes like, oh, sail away, yeah. sail away. Oh, that's a so good that's song. my favorite song in general ever, but it also happens to be my favorite marine song. So there's mine. I was stumped on this question a few days ago, and I remained stumped. What was that? Well, I couldn't come up with anything the last time this question was asked, and I still can't. Which oh, I was at dinner when this was asked before, I think. Ah, uh, OK. Yeah, so I missed all the answers. Mm. Womp womp. I think I have a favorite Marine song. It's a, a Michael Jackson song. You know what I'm talking about? I want to rock with you. <laughs> what? Oh. That was beautifully <laughs> set up. <laughs> Steve, do you have a favorite Is Marine song? Is that about a... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's an ocean song, but that's fine. I can't even look at you right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Nick. Yeah, I think we might need to have a shun side. Nick, I think, I think you're going to have to smile for the camera right now. <laughs> Steve's going to do a shimmy over so he's yeah, not in the shot. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Give him a smile. <laughs> I suppose I could go with Rocky like a hurricane. Yeah. 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 Yuck. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> All right, so are okay, we... Are we uh, is that the one that's going <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have we stopped moving down slope generally now? Are we happy to I'm go? Ha I'm happy. Uh, okay. we're, everything takes time to change, so yeah. like we're still swinging a little bit uh, southward. All right. Um, on like a much more east-west slope than I think we expected. All right. Um, but it'll come around. Yep. No, this looks good. Kay. Yeah, this is definitely a little bit friendlier. Easier to get close to the seafloor here. <laughs> the chat Bye. says, dad joke for the win. The chat liked it. <laughs> we didn't, but they did. <laughs> Somebody liked it. <laughs> Yeah, what you're missing from the uh, science, smug science cam is the uh, looks of derision from the rest of the band. Yeah. <laughs> there was, there's a derision cam too. Derision cam. <laughs> That's true. It's the full view of the van. <laughs> That's when <laughs> smug science cam switches into science shame cam. <laughs> shame. 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 <laughs> My answer to this question last time, Brittany, which I feel like is too easy, is Yellow Submarine. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. On the nose. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to revise my answer. Uh, mm. I don't know nope. if we want to nope. hear it. Too late. <laughs> All right. Just kidding. Go for it. Let's see what it is. Caribbean Queen. Ooh. Oh. Okay. 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 I can't remember who sings that song. Good song. Somebody does. Yeah. Steve, I'm surprised you haven't uh, mentioned. He's still he's still upset about. We're all upset Steve about has that. Left the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Bronwyn, do you have one? I'm gonna go with the basic one of how far I'll go from Milan. Oh. Oh. Yes. By Alessia Cara. That's a good answer. Before Moana came out, did you have a a, a, a different one? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, there's one uh, saltwater gospel. Ooh. A little probably controversial because it's a country song and also sort of about church, but it's a good one. Saltwater gas bowl? Go gospel. Oh, okay. Yeah, I support that. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah that's absolutely. Cool. <laughs> that is endorsed I'll by Gabby. I'll support the, the country music. <laughs> Bridge now. Five zero meters, zero nine zero. Someone in the chat said Lionel Richie. I'm wondering yes. what sea yeah. song. 
Oh, Lionel, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, Lionel Richie, that was it. Thank you, chat person. Lionel Richie sings which? The um, Caribbean Queen. Oh, okay. So science, are we still, um, are we looking for rocks of different uh, features? Or are we looking to just take rocks at specified increments along this track? Uh, a little bit of both. Okay. So, I mean, at this point, I think we could probably collect a rock uh, whenever you feel comfortable. I'm pretty comfortable. How about you, Karen? I'm comfortable. Comfortable? We're quite comfortable. Extremely. Nav is okay. yeah. decently comfortable. All right. Um, what about this pile of rocks right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was set looking. down. It's a nice pile of rocks. Oh, there's even a sea star. Yeah, we last wow. collected at uh, 300 meters ago. Okay. Wow, we're making good time. Let's see. Anything jumping out at you, Steve? Uh, nope, they look like rocks. Uh, I might be a little small, but let's take a look. That You're set to go? Cool. Thank Got you. On. Awesome, thanks. Oh, the second I turned that on, uh, the hydraulics dipped. Oh, really? Uh, okay, go oh, for yeah. it. I'll keep an eye on things. We may float up. I'll nice. work on it. So we stand corrected. Actually, it was Billy Ocean, <laughs> not Lionel Richie, circling back to that conversation. <laughs> oh my. It's actually this one right here. That one. Got it. We must be scientifically and musically accurate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. That's Excellent. good. Rock. Looks good. So, Starboard bio? Um, yep, this can either go in the furthest aft or, or the second forward from that. So okay, oh, one wait, of the wait. last two boxes. Can we stay on the zoom for a sec? I'm just waiting for the last side. Yep, okay. Oh, like good. 10 to 15 centimeters? Yeah, yeah, in that <laughs> range. It's a good, good healthy size rock. Um, and this is 102. 102 I. Oh. It's yeah. a lot of sampling cams. So Karen, you heard one of the one of the aft two small inboard boxes. Yes. Thank you. Somebody on the chat is wondering, after being out at sea for a while, what's something you guys are looking forward to when you're back home? Oh. <laughs> the collective groans. Um, Cooking. Yeah. Ugh, get that away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany, I'm with you. Yeah. I, I think yeah. it's the ultimate in luxury to be out here and just, like, <laughs> food magically appears. Yeah, cooking stresses me out. Um, yeah. Everybody back at home knows that. that so. That went in the furthest uh, aft. Can you finish bringing in the sample box? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah, I, I, I enjoy the... The vehicle's just doing its own thing now. Okay, you got it? Uh, yes, Great. I have it. That's so, nuts. Um, Karen, that was furthest aft? Yes. Yes, okay, thanks. I truly, I really wish I liked cooking. I'm sure I would save so much money <laughs> if I <laughs> cooked more, but. So I would have to say baking. Ooh, baking is good. I want to bake my, they've been baking for us, but I, I really enjoy baking. What's the first thing you're going to bake when you get back? English toffee bars. Oh, my gosh. oh. you had that ready. Yep. <laughs> I've been wanting that and I can't make it. Mm. 
I, this is funny, very personal answer, but I am so used to having smoothies in the morning and it's been amazing to like eat all the great breakfasts that they make for us here, but I really miss that routine, which is funny, but. You make, you make your own smoothies or I, is it like a- I have like the same smoothie every morning. It's like a part of my life that funny enough has become very boring and I'm not one usually for routines, but I think being in school made that more common and now that I've like been on the trip for a little while, I don't miss it that much. When I, the first couple of weeks, I was like, "Dang, I really <laughs> want to like wake up with my smoothie and go like sit on my porch." Um, <laughs> but also, the egg sandwiches they make are incredible, so I'll take it. Egg sandwiches, I miss those. Mm -hmm. yeah. Open face sandwiches. Right? Open face. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's been the last couple of days, and it's been mm -hmm. good. Also, yes, I have missed breakfast the past few days because I am uh, sleeping in, so <laughs> maybe that's a reason. Mm -hmm. I, I think can't another on one would be running oh. around because yeah. you can't run around that much. Yeah, that would be great. True. I want to see trees and go on a <laughs> hike. That is like... Yes. I remember doing, I like, my, my first cruise as a technician was 67 days long from Ooh. Punta Arenas to Hobart, Tasmania. First and at sea ever, or as oh, a no, as a tech. as a tech, okay. I'd been to sea as a grad student, so I was working, um, and it was sixty-seven days felt ridiculously long, and I remember saying to myself, "Oh my God, all I want to see is green," because we're in the Antarctic. Yeah. It's blue water. You see either ice, or you see blue, or you see other shades of blue, or you see other <laughs> shades of blue, gray, white. <laughs> and I remember left being like, side, "I would kill to see up. some green," and something. then somebody's like, "You know." All right of here. the decks are green, right? Oh, wait. Uh, and I just like was completely <laughs> the like, oh, not the that's same. not what I meant. <laughs> nope. Uh, and, but I hadn't noticed that slope. actually, weirdly enough. This direction. What are we looking for here? Oh, what happened? Uh, there was something coming up. I just wanted to. I can see it in the in the triclops cam. Oh, okay. Oh, this prim know it? Yeah, I don't know what it is. <coughs> what happened here? Go for zoom. Good question. All right, so it looks like I'm just going to set down are pretty bouncy right now. Yeah. yeah, if you have time. I'll give you a little vision to do that. I, I've got an idea. Yeah. Yeah, it's a prim node. Okay. Go ahead and zoom. There it is. All right. <laughs> you can go all the way in, I think. I'll try and keep it in the frame here. There you go. Kay. It's pretty in the cinema cam. Yeah, oh, yeah, so this is in the genus Norella, for sure. Okay, go away. You can at least say that. Someone in the chat is asking, do we ever get tired of shrimp, crab, and lobster? Mm -hmm. They're sure not. Okay, that's great. Um, yeah, I don't think I ever get tired of shrimp, crab, and lobster. I'm not sure if you're talking about eating or <laughs> seeing, but I'm assuming you mean seeing. Yeah. Um, I would love to see more lobsters. That's yeah. true. I feel like we should also make the distinction that the squat lobsters that we see are not actual lobsters. They're not? What are they? They are more closely related to hermit crabs. I'm mm. pretty sure, according to um, our specialist's talk earlier in the cruise. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I remember them saying that too. So I would be interested in seeing lobsters too, because I don't, I don't, I don't think we really do see them that much. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> dinner time. It is dinner time here on the ship. So we're switching out some of the team here in the control van. You might be hearing some new voices as uh, some of our team goes downstairs to get their dinner. Always, yeah. So it looks like we have Michael joining us as the Atalanta pilot. We have James joining us as the Hercules pilot. Oh, there is actually more sediment coming up to the right. Yeah. That could be interesting. We're moving due east, so we're moving in the right direction regardless. Mm. Uh, sonar is pretty gentle. Should be coming up on a cliff pretty soon, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah probably maybe another uh, 100 meters. It should start rising pretty quickly. Okay. We have Lynette joining us as a navigator and Panos joining us as the video. So, <clears throat> excuse me, um, this is the four to eight crew. Some of us have switched out to go get some dinner. Uh, I'm gonna be doing that probably in the next 30 minutes or so, but if anybody online is just now joining us, we are currently in a dive, uh, the deepest dive that we've done so far for this, um, for this expedition. We're taking a look at an unnamed seamount site nine and our maximum depth so far has been 3,200 meters so far we've been seeing lots and lots and lots of rocks um, some biology we just saw a uh, was it a crinoid a few minutes ago um, but we're expecting that as we climb up the seamount that uh, maybe that biology biology is going to pick up a little bit more. Yep. I I really like this this uh, transition zone because you see not only the sediment as well as the rock. This is perfect if we can follow this up. Don't These might be the uh, nuggets that were collected earlier. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Panos. We did collect a scoop earlier on in the dive of some of these uh, crusty bits or nuggets. Ferromanganese. Yep. Good. All right. Good capture. Did anyone else see that shrimp? I saw a shrimp. I believe you. Bronwyn's on it. Thank you. That brings our shrimp count up to four so far this dive. Oh yeah. This dive or this uh, watch? This watch. Must be this watch. It has we to be this watch. More than four. Yes, this dive is twenty. Ah. Wait, this watch we've already seen three. Yeah. Like from four to we see we saw three in one hour. Yeah. Where was I? <laughs> <laughs> wow, I really missed the shrimp. All right, and they need to pay more attention. Yeah, the, the rocky substrate in this area and this slope has been underwhelming, so it, it, it's interesting to mm -hmm. see. I really like to see this transition zone to see what's living here, if there's any sea pens off to the right or if there's any, you know, hard, yeah, yeah. any port in a storm for this uh, colophagus sponge coming up it's on the lone rock in the area. Do we have a euclid sponge there? Uh, it's a colophagus resellid sponge, I believe. Hey. Yep. Unusually white stalk there. Yeah, interesting. The shadow just looks like cotton candy. Do they molt? <laughs> Is that a stupid question? No, they they don't molt, but there might just might be might be older stock, right. older material, or. Could be overgrown by hydroids and accumulate, uh, you know, biofilms, for example. Mm. It's really solid white below. Yeah, the that really does look like a, 
like a cotton candy yep. handle. Yeah, it's it's concave on the other side, so uh, it should not be totally round. Speaking of sponges, somebody um, had a question about, we're seeing lots of sponges so far on these dives, right? Um, are they the same as the ones brought, uh, uh, the same ones bought for baths and showers? Or what's the difference? Have any of these been used for showers or baths? Uh, not recommended. <laughs> quite, Probably quite unpleasant. Glass. Um, the, the sponges you use and you may find that are commercially harvested are shallow water sponges. They, uh, they're made of, of a protein called spongin, which makes them far more agreeable to, uh, to your skin. But these sponges here are glass sponges, so they're spicules. Rather than being proteinaceous, they're made out of glass, effectively. Uh, so imagine things like fiberglass uh, or uh, things like this, um, you know, fiberglass insulation or or even like a spongy long fiber um, fiberglass that you might see, you know, for construction. Uh, and they're they're pretty unpleasant. Some of them can be very spiny and some of them not very spiny at all, kind of like cotton candy, but it's all part of the same material. So you wouldn't want to put that on your skin. And oftentimes, even when we're wearing gloves, and some of them uh, can puncture your glove and give you a nasty sting. All right, I think we're good with the sponge. Keep on right. going up. Going up. Right, we're just trying to keep the ship moving and kind of yeah. transecting up really opportunistically zooming. Sure. Uh, Atalanta okay. was just catching us there, so we still had, you know, we had a little bit of time. Okay. Shrimp. We'll have to add it to the count. We might have too many counts going at this point. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think uh, we should focus on space. shrimp or squat. Yeah. Let's say plus. Gotta keep the data loggers busy. Rock. <laughs> it's a sponge, another sponge. This one this one actually looks more like polyopagon or something related. Or actually, no, uh, it looks more similar to the same family, but this looks more like um, the one we collected earlier in the expedition that was in the, the uh, nugget field. Um, what was it called? There we go. Just a quick screen grab is more than enough here. All right, continuing on. It's uh, Semperella. Mm. We did sample that, I think, on our first or maybe second dive. I think we've got the whole colony. If I don't, if I remember correctly. Oh, oh even better. Engine star. Oh, what is, sorry, I was looking at the bottom left there at something weird. Okay. Um, on that rock there? I don't know. Am I looking at nothing? Let's you zoom going. in, maybe. Oh. Does it look like something? Am I crazy? Where? You mean right here? Or uh, No, hold on. Right where the lasers are now, just below it. Yeah. Yeah. That, on that rock. That might be crazy. They're talking about this. Oh, that's just uh, the, yeah, there's a bunch of cenoviophores in the sediment. Yeah. These uh, single-celled foraminiferin protists. I had to Google that when you mentioned it in the chat. That's cool. They're very common, uh, especially in the sedimented environments. Oh, there is a anemone on the rock that was uh, just passed over. Very tiny. There's a lot of life everywhere. It's oftentimes, you know, you have to remember that the ROV is just another type of microscope, you know. Very expensive one. Yeah. 
Although I it's a telemicroscope. There's probably some actual microscopes that are ex as expensive in some cases. Okay. It is, I think, sprinoid, probably. Oh yeah, coming up on the lasers now. You can see it in the Cyclops. Yeah, that's my favorite new camera I yeah, have right amazing. in front of me. <laughs> if if you doesn't look like what we're looking at is centered, it's because I'm flying with that one because it's yeah. beautiful. I know. <laughs> I think everyone's been very impressed with how it's worked. And and we're not even exporting the photos at the highest resolution possible. Really? Yep. Interesting. Yeah, th I think this is this is a crinoid we saw a bit deeper, but still good to see that it's still in this depth distribution. Is this a crinoid you've seen on previous dives? Uh, yes, it's it's pretty commonly observed, um, and I think it's been collected in the past as well. Okay. So this is probably in the Bathycrinidae family. I think we saw them at the top of the seamount on the last dive. Yeah, it was in that area where we saw four different crinoids in one space. Yeah. And almost that. all crinoids <laughs> <laughs> in the land of the crinoids. It right? actually could be a hyocrinid too. I think I found, a, I found a good found idea is, on it. And I the Calis is, is, has this little yep. uh, bump here. Yep. It's different of the flat one. I think that was what I... Wait, what's this one? Same. Just yeah, I think that was what the tentative idea I gave it was. Hyocrinidae. So if we Bridge keep following now. this um, this kind of uh, transition we zone, yeah. uh, we're kind of diverting from the way the ship is moving. I'm not sure which way, if that was going to a specific waypoint. No, that's fine. We've followed it for quite a bit, so let's follow the ship. Okay. Yep. All right. Now i got to go this way. Yeah, we expect, you know, this this is actually kind of good because we might be able to go over some sediment and see some different things. See some sediment? No, no. Sediment has life. A lot of life. Yeah, it's true. It's, it's one of the most neglected... You know, is that what makes it different from like dirt? <laughs> right? Sediment means that there's things in it. That's fundamental. Yep. Cool. I like seeing the uh, like these like oasis of the stuff sometimes. Like you'll see a rock or something like that, and then a bunch of stuff on it. Yeah. Stuff growing on it. Yeah. So we'll keep an eye out for sea pens, uh, sticks, and things that look like they're sticking out of the sediment. Uh, that might be corals. And they're important habitat for things that live in these more, I wouldn't say barren, but less populated landscapes. Are we looking for big sea pens or small sea pens or? Um, <laughs> any sea pen. Any sea pen we can <laughs> get, right, Aisa? <laughs> but is yes. it something that we would see right away or is it kind of like a black coral that we would have to zoom in on it? There is different types. Uh, some of the colonies can be very small and delicate, Oops. like the Ambalula, Maybe. we collect in the other, um, dive. Uh, some penatula as well or pichilella can be also quite small. But you're going to have species like we have seen that the Bautzina that looks like this big uh, red sticky white kind that um, you'll be much taller in the last dive we saw that was um, about a meter, some of them or even more. Can we um maybe move the ship so th the last watch we were moving a little bit more eastward to not go down slope maybe we can move okay. the ship a little bit more to the southeast to kind of aim to reacquire the slope north of waypoint three okay sure sounds good but there's there is some sign of bioturbation here for sure bridge now fish Let's zoom in panos one looks like a cusk eel can we cancel that move and instead move five zero Where'd meters you go? one three five? There's a, I would say more like pebble or or small five gravel zero sized rocks. One three five. Uh, in this sedimented slope, so it's not completely sediment, but that could be interesting too because we see sea pens, sponges, uh, other kinds of invertebrates. Can we zoom here? Yeah. Whatever that red thing is. Is that a sea star? No, uh, looks like it. Do you think uh, we oh, might oh, be oh, able to oh, pick oh. that up? Yeah. The sea star? 
Yeah. Uh, where do you want to put it? Front box. Okay. Bridge. Is there anything floating? Which no, box? Nothing in the front box. Nope, nothing yet. Sorry. Um, can we cancel that and hold position, please? Thank you. Let me try to get it. Or do you want to try to get it? Uh, I gotta have to hold this. It's not gonna stay by itself. Oh, sure. If you want to take it, if you're done with dinner, we'll get a zoom on. Go it for it. First. He, he saw it and he just wanted to come in. <laughs> so it's a it's a goniasteroid star in that family can tell from this distance at least um, and interesting note is that goni asteroids are pretty poorly known from below 2,000 meters although in recent years there's been more collections but from conversations I've had with um, Dr. Chris Ma at the Smithsonian uh, sea star uh, asteroid sea star expert and echinoderms generally basically there's pretty poorly known uh, Pretty poorly known, especially this deep, almost 3,000 meters. Can we come wide, please? Um, you think we got to uh, move closer? Probably, eh? Yeah. Yes, if you don't mind, please. Yeah. Bridge now. Can we move three zero meters west, please? Thank you. Am I um, sucking this star up, or am I just grabbing it with the jaws? Uh, either. Um, um, I don't think it's going to go into the suction hose. Mm. If you think you can get it in the fingers, I can just plop it in the forward box. OK, sounds good. Or you can do the here. suction, suction, slurp, and I don't know, whatever works best, I think. Or whatever you're comfortable with. Are you going to sit down or are you happy just like that? It's going to teeter. I can't. Uh, we're okay. getting pulled. No worries. So we've no got to do this quickly. I'm going to have oh. to hold it manually. All right. Cool. Shall I just try and scoop it with the scoop or scoop it with the jaws? What? I think I'm just trying to scoop it, uh, suck it rather. If sounds good, okay, cool. It's about seven centimeters from tip of arm to tip of arm. Um, what's the diameter on the slurp on the slurp uh, circle? I, if we slurp, it won't go in. It probably will just we'll use the slurp to grab it. Okay. Yeah, and then you can deposit it in the box, but. Uh, or or just grab it. Uh, whatever you're comfortable with, again. Uh, can you run the slurp, Mike? Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, no. <coughs> this one. Yeah. Well, I, even if it doesn't, we can use it as a, like a grapple and then. Good thinking. Uh, switch the cameras over, or is that? Yeah, sample, uh, and then the cameras to the... Sorry, vehicle's no, not sitting. Yeah, we're experiencing dropping pressure. Yes, yeah, that's what it is. I think we're going to confirm. Which one's empty, guys? Five? 
There's five, five books empty. I'm sorry, did you ask me something? Yeah, it's five empty. Five, sorry, the slurp five? Yes. Uh, there's a squat lobster in there. We could probably uh, put them together, but um, I think we're just trying to pick it up with the slurp and put it into one of right, the fires. Right, it's just more of a fail safe if, if, uh -huh, if it yep. goes through. Yeah, no, we should be fine. Okay. We're at sample number 103. Okay, hold on, sorry, Karen. I got okay. want to okay. get you a little closer, be a little easier. Perfect. time you have, what's the suction, oh, it's not on right now, okay. Go for it. Okay. There you go. Cool. Yeah. You can put it in either Either of the forwards, we don't have anything in there yet. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll look down in a second. Uh, I have a free hand. I'm kind of losing my grip on the thingy. Uh, uh oh. What do you want to do? Um. So have. Okay. okay. Um. Nice aim. Let go. It's off. Oh, it's off. This okay. Looks, this looks very much like Caliaster. For the very long arms. Yeah. This is a nice collection. Did you happen to see which one that fell into? It looked like. Give it a second. Lambda. Lambda. Thank you. Beautiful. Cool. Uh, thank you so much. Amazing. Interesting is that. Um, Hold on, Karen. There are. Thanks. There are very few. We have some images of Caliaster from Johnston Atoll that don't have a species name, so this might be something really valuable, really useful. Mm. Especially the ones that were not on corals. But let's say Goniasteridae for now, and we, we'll examine it when we get it up on the ship. 10-4? Uh, 40, we start to see suction in the jar. And that, yeah. But did, I don't know if you were looking at that. 13, 14. We were sampling earlier and we were down at like 800. Thanks. Just with the arm and a couple of thrusters. Horizontals and birds. I'm not sure. Thanks. Steve, are those, um, oh, we have the weird echo voice again with the sound. Steve, are those um, potentially ones that would predate on coral specimens in the same bio box? Good I course. know that you mentioned that oh they're no. like yeah. pretty short turnover, but. I mean, it, we only have about like six hours left in the dive. I, I, I'm not worried about, I mean, <laughs> I, I've never seen predation occur on the time scale of a Nautilus dive, so I would really not be concerned about samples, eating other samples in the box. Thank you.
but I think we uh, used our nugget scoop a little bit too early. <laughs> we need to deploy a nugget scoop uh, bag number two. I don't, I don't know, I mean, this looks more like dust, like rubble, gravel, you know, really ground fine. Okay. Yeah, it's very interesting. There is a sponge, though. Uh, oh, it's another right. Semperilla. Semperilla is really characteristic of these types of um, substrates. Where's that sponge, Steve? Uh, I see it in the in the Triclops cams. It, it's very tiny. Uh, okay. So it's right, probably right in front of the camera lens. It's almost what I would imagine uh, the ferromanganese nodules would look like. Don't, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll pass it. It's Semperilla. I, okay. We know what it is. It's just a small one. Oh, I think I see it. All right, so the crew is back in the van. Uh, we had a delicious dinner. My name is Brittany. I am one of the science communication fellows here on the EV Nautilus. And uh, Ashley was taking over for me. So thanks so much for doing that, Ashley. Trying to catch up on questions in the chat. But this is a little, little nice um, deviation from our track because we had been on pretty much rock the whole time and now it's starting to get a little bit more gravelly but we're gonna we're kind of moving in a s well our intention was to move southeasterly and then reacquire the slope north of waypoint three um, so that we can start to sample some more rocks mm -hmm. how I, I don't curious curiosity how hard is this um, substrate are you uh, bouncing off of it or is it pretty s well we can find out you want to poke it we've got some time yeah. you yeah. don't need to poke it yeah just to poke it okay yeah. poke yeah. It. i mean if <laughs> i was just wondering if you like since your view <laughs> since the vehicle is kind of bouncing on the bottom but first step of all it, science fine too, so. <laughs> i mean okay, it's it obviously very soft so you the you just want to like land and yeah, see yeah. how hard it is yeah i mean it's got in fauna right the sediment there's there's traces of of life is that a By observation, uh, yeah, shrimp. Is shrimp? Yeah. Shrimp. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Our pointless Good shrimp. Uh, I hope somebody's recording this data because it's actually useful. Yeah, how many shrimp are we at? Somebody uh, take a picture of this. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty-one. Uh, what? You can actually zoom. Yeah, that's right. On this, I think there's a little mm. shrimpy that I've got centered up here. <laughs> Didn't we start the dive at three shrimp? That's what I'm saying. We're at 21 I'm very trip. confused about nope. all of this. No, nope. we started at <coughs> 19. Okay, okay. That makes much more sense. Thank you. Okay. Uh, like, look at those little nodules. Those are some good nuggets. You think those are nodules? No, I mean, nodules are going to form deeper in the uh, in the ocean, but... Yeah. So we are blasting up some sediment just by being landed here. Yeah. Uh, just using the verts. Uh, do you want to... Uh, well, I guess uh, we should probably try and take a push core. Do you want to, are we moving or what's what's the status? Uh, the ship's moving, but we have time. Uh, well, why don't we poke it first to make sure that we can even get in? This could be yeah. just solid. Yeah, it, it, oh. it could be, yeah. Uh, do you want to go wide? If we were wondering about scooping, we've already scooped. Yeah, yes. It's pretty okay. soft. Yeah, it feels yeah, pretty it soft. Interesting. Cool. Um, want to grab a push core? Yeah. Why not? Why not? We'll try. If it's I mean, this is not, uh, you know, if it comes up as not very deep or yeah, totally. it's not cohesive, we'll um, carry so on. So I can't. Uh, if you're struggling. To get a good angle on something, I can always tap the box out a bit, a little, little okay, bit. Okay, thanks. Okay. Yes, yes. it is. Yeah. 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 Um. So, would you? S So again, we are currently conducting a dive yeah. at, what is our current depth? 
Uh, right now, the depth of Hercules is 2,944 meters. So pretty deep. This is definitely the deepest dive that we've done so far on this cruise. And this is our yep. fifth dive. So this is sample 104. For nav. Thank you. And while we are doing these dives, we're definitely seeing a lot of coral, a lot of uh, different types of sponges, um, invertebrates and things like that. We have a question from Marty. Hi, Marty. Uh, what defines a colony? So when we talk about corals, oftentimes we, we use that word colony. So Steve, can you tell us a little bit more about what that means? Uh, in, re in reference to a coral colony like, like that? I'm assuming yeah. it's a cor coral colony, yeah. yeah. A colony Brown is the last drop. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. A colony is just um, basically an a, it's an association of genetically identical individuals uh, sharing resources usually. So in the context of a coral, each uh, polyp is is an individual animal, but together they compose the colony, uh, which can do things like make a skeleton and um, and and share resources. That would be great, thank you. And our coral, um, the only organism that has colonies, are, are sponges also considered a colonial organism? Or are they different? Uh, in a way, yeah, in a way. I guess uh, not traditionally colonial, but you know there are colonial aspects to their living. So for example, you know, the, Sponges are made up of small uh, flagellated organisms. So uh, yep. we weren't able to get more than about, I don't know, maybe an inch. Yeah. Uh, and uh, hold on. Are you halted right now? I am, yes. OK. I just don't have much control up here. Um, yeah, we were able to get about, this is the, this core right now contains like about an inch from two different spots. Okay. Uh, do you want us to, sh we can only get about an inch here. Yeah, all right, well, let's do it then. Um, okay. Yeah, an, an inch probably won't won't result in much um, much useful information, so let's, let's do it. But it was good to test, at least. So we're not considering this a sample? No, no sample. Cool. Oh. No. Roger. Because uh, samples aren't samples until they're stowed on the vehicle. Oh, oh it looks like it's empty now. Yeah, that's Bridge, fine. Bridge, no? So, <coughs> are we keeping that uh, sample we can do another five zero meters. No, uh, so it, we didn't, oh. so we, we tested the seafloor with a, a push core, but there's nothing really held. Okay. About an inch, yeah, about an inch, yeah. Yeah. We did. Somebody is asking about uh, the pressure that these organisms are used to. Um, would they be able to survive on the surface, mm -hmm. live life on the surface like in an aquarium? Um, I can wait till science is available to uh, kind of chime in on that a little bit more, but my gut is saying no, most likely not. I don't know if there would have to be like a very, very intricate setup in order to recreate the type of pressure that would be needed for these organisms to survive. Um, so stand by, that's a great question. Was the question about having deep sea organisms on exhibit in an aquarium? Pretty much, so yeah, like yeah. would that be possible or how yeah. much pressure would they need? I can actually start with that uh, question. Um, I used to work at Monterey Bay Aquarium, and we had a uh, had several deep sea um, small exhibits over the years. And there's now a, a full size exhibition about the deep sea. Um, and what uh, it's it's kind of all about curating the animals that are in the exhibit. Um, so animals without um, without swim bladders are obviously a good choice because uh, well they don't have. There's not a lot of them with those in the deep sea, but um, uh, 
typically invertebrates don't need that pressure uh, to to survive. So there are um, crabs, sea stars, uh, deep sea isopods on exhibit. There are cephalopods, um, and all of those. For all of those, the the limiting factor is the temperature of the water um, rather than than pressure. Um, so keeping really cold temperatures. And then also learning um, life cycles and how they feed is really important. So there's a lot of science that goes on behind the scenes to um, kind of crack the code on life cycles and how to um, how to keep organisms alive at a totally different um, in a totally different location once they're collected from the deep sea. Awesome. Yeah, now that you mention it, I have totally been to the Monterey Bay Aquarium and I totally have seen the giant deep sea exhibit and there yeah. absolutely were live animals in there. So. Yeah, that makes so much sense that it, for especially for invertebrates, you know, um, not so much the pressure, but the temperature is what, yeah. is and what then, does it. You know, there are rockfish on exhibit that also come from deeper depths, not, obviously there aren't rockfish in the deep, deep sea, but yeah. um, they're collected carefully and with um, techniques that release um, air from their swim bladder, so they're not having those pop out on the way back up. So certainly techniques to do it, but a lot of science going on behind the scenes. Right. And a lot of actually um, papers published from from the work that Monterey Bay Aquarium Aquarists have done behind the scenes, which is awesome. Um, there's a lot of work about jellies happening there too. Nice. Yeah, I wish I had more time to check out that exhibit. I was kind of like a, it was like a flyby. Uh, you'll also give yeah. it a little tap down on the top and that seats it nicely in the bung and that will seal it up. So we're doing one three five, which will put us um, starting to head up this little steeper slope in about a hundred <coughs> meters. As a heads up, hundred fifty meters. I love that we're getting some uh, questions in the chat. Yeah, um, why is the bottom so empty of life because of the pressure? So I know it looks really empty right now. Um, we have been kind of in a rocky patch with this dive so far, but uh, so far what I've seen while being on this expedition, the deep sea is actually really, really full of life. Maybe not with so much megafauna, like big animals, but lots and lots and lots and lots of different types of coral, squat lobster. Uh, we saw some Dumbo octopus, uh, was it yesterday? The day before? I'm losing losing track of time. Um, but yeah, there, there are things living down here. It just doesn't really, I guess, look like it at first glance. Um. Yeah, and there's a good amount of microbial life on the like sheets, even in the sand, yeah. right? Is, that, is yes. that correct? Yes, that's true. So it looks like we're coming up on a, a little bit of a slope and we're starting to see a little bit more pillow basalts. So we might want to uh, collect one of these samples near the bottom if that's at all possible. Great. What do you okay. think, Gabby? Yeah, I mean, we absolutely have time here. Uh, Karen, you ready to, to go for a sample? Yes. yes, I am. Okay. Cat valve is on. Where'd you see some, Nick? It looked like um, there were some really good ones at the actual very bottom. Yeah. This one looks kind of cemented. Okay. Some of you might be wondering how long is left of the dive. Um, yeah, so we are estimated to be concluding this dive loose? closer Maybe. to about okay. midnight Hawaiian Standard Time. Only one way to find out. Yeah. Let's poke some rocks. We've had uh, good luck poking. <laughs> it's the GOP technique. <laughs> Are you looking at this one? Uh, I, was, I think I was looking at this one, but yeah, that one won't work. That looks it like might it's be kind of big, okay. but it's cool. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, a okay, long. Um, that's a little bit of a reach. You want to okay. go to this lower right one here? Uh, yeah. Which one were you talking about? This one? The, no. This oh, one. yeah. Something that in one. there. Yeah, oh, either one of those. Okay. Let's see. One of the exciting things about being on the Nautilus is being able to uh, actually cut these rocks open um, while we're yeah. in transit. And uh, it's like opening uh, Christmas 
uh, gifts <laughs> unwrapping and seeing what's inside. It's, uh, it's really exciting as a geologist. Uh, we've seen some really interesting uh, basalts. We've seen some nice uh, volcanoclastic breaches. Uh, we've seen a fossiliferous limestone. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that's just a first order observation. I, I'm not 100% sure about those, but. Mm. Uh, Is that the one with the, with the shells in it? Yeah, the little shell yeah, fragment is really completely cool. white inside. Uh, um, yeah, what's up? I'm having trouble staying down, okay. like using my verts to stay, like I'm trying to use the verts to stay on the rock. Yeah, Nick was showing uh, some of us some of the rock samples that he's cut open, and we were all kind of salivating a little because they look like <laughs> 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 Like there yeah. was a tiramisu rock, and yeah. there was a, what else was there? We had a layer cake rock layer and a tiramisu rock. rock. Uh, I think Samantha described it as a tuna sandwich. Tuna yeah, sandwich there was a tuna, tuna yeah, that rock. one wasn't so. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting rocks. Yeah. Tasty rocks. Tasty it's rocks. It's fun to look through the pictures too, because I go through all the sample images and put them in the folders, and yeah. and when I look through, I get to look through the in situ, like what the pictures we take of where we took it from, sure. then the pictures we take of it uncut <laughs> in the lab and it cut yes. open in the lab. Okay. And yeah, you're like, wow, get to see the whole evolution. Didn't see that coming. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see what's going on in the front row. don't even want that one, do no. you? What does it look like inside? Is that worth looking at? Totally cracked open. Yeah. Just crust? Probably. Crest. It's white, though. I don't know. Oh, if it's Some white, Some of that it'll... phosphorite stuff. Or yeah, it might, might be limestone. Hi, Debbie. Thanks for joining us. It's so great to see you on the chat. Um, we have a question coming in about what do you look for when you're looking for the perfect rock sample? Um, does it have a nice personality? <laughs> <laughs> long walks down the slope. Yeah. Long walks down the slope. Very, very long walks. Uh, that's funny. Oh, that's what a, yeah, what's that one like? Yeah, that, <laughs> that one? Yeah, okay. That one. Um, you know, from from just looking at it from a camera angle, it's it's really difficult to tell even oh. if we can pick it up. First of all, uh, and of course, our pilots do a great job of uh, of oh. navigating through these oh. waters and, and grabbing samples that we request. But yeah, uh, sorry. We're, sorry. we're looking for rocks that are typically unaltered, um, and just by a, a simple observation, that t normally means um, okay. Gabby, less rounded, more would angular. it be easiest, or is it easier for you all to set down on the sand at the very base, or no, not, okay, okay, got it, that's a thruster thing, okay. It looks like yeah. this flow is pretty cohesive it is at this point. It is stowed, and the craft valve is off. I'm what sure was that word you said earlier? Sub, yeah. not sub aerial, but sub rounded? Was that it? Sub rounded. Okay. I, I would say these are rounded. Okay. I so would describe these as rounded, pillow basalts, uh, cohesive. No bueno. But, like I said before, it's always mm -hmm. better to have more rocks than no rocks. All right. <laughs> Hopefully, we can get you some more rocks. Need rocks. I want to cu cut open another one. Nick was so kind to let me uh, cut open one a few days ago. Yeah? Yeah. At first, I was like, no way am I getting near that machine that <laughs> cuts open rocks. Are you kidding me? But um, it was totally fine. It was fun. Yeah. It's, I hope I can do it again. It's not as scary once you do it once no, or twice. No, not so. Yeah. But yeah, I agree. The first time you do it, it's a little intimidating. Yeah. It's like, that thing's going to take my fingers off. But I find it fully terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Done it before, still terrifying. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, the sound <laughs> is really scary, and just, yeah. yeah. And the moving <laughs> ship, and the yeah, the, the moving ship is something the, I never thought I when would. When the saw stops because you hit a hard bit, it's like. Ah. Yeah. Uh, did you hear about the little episode I had the other day where I was cutting a rock and shorted out the science lab? Yes, you did. Yeah. You did mention that it was funny. It came up like at the end of the conversation, <laughs> and I was like, oh well. Uh, that's good to know because yeah. freezers are on that. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but, but luckily all, all we good. got it. We got it on right away. 
Oh, yeah, that good. Could have been a really bad story. That's okay. <laughs> that looks like it might be loose, if it's possible. If not, no worries. Yeah. I know it's a little late. It's also huge. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Sorry. I didn't realize you're zoomed out. What was that, Leela? My fault. My fault. <laughs> huge. 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 <laughs> huge. <laughs> Wow, look at all the pillow basalts on the Atlanta, at Atlanta. Yeah, camp. and these are all, and they're all magically loose. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. <laughs> like so Nick, now. can you remind us what you I'm mean when you say you're looking for an altered. unaltered rock? What does that mean? Uh, an unaltered rock is a rock that has not gone under sea, uh, any uh, seawater alteration, essentially. So uh, kind of like a geode on land, um, any type of water can actually see through the pores of the rock and change the mineral composition um, or add minerals in vesicles, which if you remember the term that we call for that. Uh, um, amygdal? Amygdal, good job. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, oh, there it is. There you go. Uh, <laughs> so oftentimes these secondary minerals are clays, and clays have a lot of potassium in them. And potassium is one of the key elements that right. uh, is used for determining the ages of the rocks. So if you have excess amount of potassium, then you'll have excess ages, and your rock, and your rock ages will be incorrect. Okay. So got to keep it keep it pure, unaltered. Yeah, it's it's what we call a closed system. You want to make yeah, sure that yeah. the system has been isolated and closed for as long as possible. Um, otherwise you can't be confident of the, uh, of the age. Thanks for explaining. Of course. Some nice rocks here. <coughs> We uh, do a collection so here, possibly, or still? Looks good. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I wasn't actually talking on SPL. Like okay. uh, does no. anything look good but here? Uh, is that too big? Oh, yeah, that's big. That's big. Yeah. yeah that <laughs> I didn't see that dark part. Yeah, so maybe that one. Uh, you start off, maybe this one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We may only get one shot because uh, the pressure has already taken a nosedive. Um, so. Yeah, let's go for the one you're already yeah. aiming for. Oh. B not flat. <laughs> so uh, it looks flat. Uh, yeah. Kind of small. Too. Oh, I, uh, actually, it's not as small as you think. That might be not. Flat. Yeah, you're right. Let's keep it. Okay. Cool. Doesn't look like those long, flat crusts that we were picking up with the previous dive, but it might be. Would you say that's about uh? 15 centimeters, It's 20. so hard to tell when it's, it's not over, but yeah, probably yeah. something around that. Um. Okay, you ready, Stowe? Yep, ready. Um. I'll just put on the sample. Yeah, there you go. Bronwyn, can you repeat? Uh, the other problem with this is that yep, it means that the, bow box C, the boxes the are from slow. The and, and this is 104. So one of the reasons we want to avoid, uh, I mean, we're going to take this one, but uh, in general, sometimes those flatter rocks, even when they're angular, might be uh, pure ferromanganese crust, yeah. like we saw in the, give you one in more the camera. loaf oh, yeah. of bread. Yes, yes. Thanks. Oh, that's nice. But the big ones know. also could be totally not yeah. good yeah. <laughs> either. Our, our first dive, our best um, rock was a cannonball, cannonball shape. Ball, yeah. yeah. Uh, so wow. you never know. Look at that um, sponge. 
Speaking of rock sizes, yeah. somebody in the chat wants to know, what is the maximum rock size that we can grab? Ooh, that's a Layla question, uh, I think. I don't know, maybe Gabby knows the dimensions of the bio boxes better, but E is probably like, oh, uh, 40 centimeters. That sounds right. Something <laughs> like that. So pretty big. You, we have, and, and sometimes they go on the porch and then they're bigger. <laughs> right. Really? Yeah, you collected? Steve yeah. Was yeah. Collected. yeah. I think yes. Steve was telling us earlier there was Wait, a rock that they sampled. C, from. C, C, which is the third up like from the back. 73 pounds or something like that. And C is uh, second, two up yeah. from the back. This one. Yeah. One, okay. one back. Um, one back from there. Oh. Okay. So this, okay. Yeah. Watch that. Nice. Okay. Beautiful. Yep. <clears throat> I think I'm a little bit close to the rock, so I'll wait till you come. I can retract so what that. I, yeah, you retract that, and I will pick up. Did you get that so one? You can come around. Yep. What was the rock Sweet. ID on that? Uh, Sap lighting? Yes. Okay. Sorry, 104. 104. Thank you. So in order to help us uh, get an idea of how large or small something is, we are using lasers. Um, you can see those pretty clearly in the first uh, channel for a satellite feed. So those two green dots are some lasers that we use. They are spaced 10 centimeters apart. OK, that's the box fully retracted. Awesome. I'll go back to dive configuration. Yeah, sounds great. Are we happy for another move? Uh, you want to figure out this? Was the bio this low before too? It was kind of like low over the naturally bit and low over the rocks. Yeah. Cool pillows though. Bridge now. Cool pillows. Starting to come up on that uh, ridge a little bit. Uh, five zero meters, one three five. Yeah, we're definitely, uh, this is the start of the, the little slope here. And then we'll plateau out again and then continue up to the summit. Really is amazing the the volume of melt that was required to make a seamount this size, and uh, it's a relatively small seamount in the bigger picture of what we see on the Earth. Yeah. Especially when you compare it to larger flood basalt flood basalt events like the Columbia River Columbia basalts. Columbia River basalts. Which, it's like most of the yeah, western covered, United States. Covered an entire state. Um, they've actually been responsible for some extinction events yeah. um, mm -hmm. 250 million years ago mm -hmm. uh, during the uh, Permian extinction. It was the greatest loss of, of life overall, I think, uh, which kind of shadowed the asteroid extinction 65 million years ago. And that was thought to have been caused by opening of uh, the Siberian traps, mm. which just released an enormous amount of sulfur. And this is over the course of millions of years, but uh, enough sulfur to change the environment and uh, and climate mostly um, to really have a catastrophic effect on on life. That's scary. Yeah. <laughs> so you're saying this event uh, was a bigger extinction and bigger extinction event oh than God. the uh, asteroid that wiped out. Correct. Most of yeah. us. 
It's known in, geolo in geology as the Great Dying. The I Great think, uh, Dying, yes, 85 I, I have heard of this, or something, this uh, Great Dying, yes. Species. But you're saying that it happened over a, a long period of time. It wasn't. Yeah. Like well, it's hard to really determine. You know, something 250 million years ago. You know, is a few inches to feet yeah, yeah, of yeah. sediment uh, of you know rock record that you're looking at. So it's hard to to really pinpoint the time. But it's it's thought that it's uh, and not only that, but a volcanic event like that is going to be something that lasts longer than humans have been around sometimes. Yeah. really awesome stuff to think about. Yeah, Nick, I don't know if you know, but I'm curious. Most of that dying was due to, like, biogeochemical and atmospheric changes from what got I, I think so. Spewed yeah. into the air. Yeah, uh, mostly from the sulfur waters. and carbon dioxide uh, that are um, um, in dissolution uh, within the lava that kind of escape uh, as gases uh, went during eruption, and the the amount of carbon uh, being released. Just uh, doing a quick Google search, uh, it's approximately 3,900 to 12,000 gigatons of carbon. Oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, you can imagine uh, that it had a profound effect on life. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, and sulfur as well. I, I, there's a lot of sulfur dioxide released. Um, creates these anoxic env uh, environments, which I think we all know is not, not ideal good. for yeah. for for most life forms. <laughs> not the best <laughs> no it's a big loose rock too big but very tall bamboo coral Now that we have both Nick and Steve in the van again, I had questions for both of you. These are my own questions. So Nick, I wanted to ask you, what is your favorite sea animal? And Steve, <laughs> I wanted to ask you, oh, what no. is your favorite rock? Did we have this? I think we did, already? yeah. I think I already made Steve cringe with that answer. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure everyone groaned when I gave mine. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> your real answer, not that other one. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Fringe. laughs> Alright, you go first. <laughs> hey, um, wow. Get this, I, you know, get I that smug camera ready. <laughs> um, actually, no, gonna, uh, uh, Nick, on. before you start, did, sure. was, did you want to try for another rock while we're waiting for Atalanta to start moving? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, I Let's do. do it. Uh, is that, uh, what's the size on that? Too big? Uh, yeah, that'll be real big. Okay. It's hard to tell when you're when you're yeah, zoomed out. Um, yeah, totally. Um, okay, so I'm looking at there's this one yeah, sort of center bottom. This here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we can uh, give that a go. That too. There's one there. I don't yeah. know if that's a that maybe, but yeah, go for the one that you were um, initially. Uh, it might be at. huge. I my yeah. eyes are bigger than my stomach too. It so happens. Not yeah. just it you. Ha <laughs> there's two. There's two options oh, on the right hand yeah. side of the screen. Yeah. Sorry if you already landed. It's very crusty. Okay. Yeah, it's almost so out. Can I give it a go? Toroidal type of a crust, mm -hmm. uh, but it's just pillow basalt. Very mm -hmm. bulbous. So would crust be considered a rock? <laughs> no. No? She said no. I'm going with <laughs> it. I, the geologist was thinking about it. I think we should let him th finish. I, it depends if you're defining rock in the like functional sense. Like, is it functionally a rock? Can you like throw I it I would say it's something? a part of a rock. I wouldn't say it's a rock in itself. Unless mm. it's a nodule, then it's a rock. Oh, wow. Mm. But, uh... Yeah, I, I like... Uh, nodule is my favorite rock. 
Yeah. Crusty yeah. nodules. Crusty nodules. Okay. Because it's complex and it has layers. Nice. <laughs> Like me. Like, like onions <laughs> and parfaits. Like ogres. That looks, that looks yeah, like really ogres. Uh, like that really might thin. be flat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> would you be mad if I passed Sounds on it? Sounds like you'd love the rock. No. I would not be. Okay, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a pass on that one. We it's like picking up rocks. Flat. And we're starting to get a system for the, um, for the limitations of the hydraulic system right now. So we're just, more practice is better. Fair enough. Do you see, see something, Steve? I don't see anything that's jumping, jumping out at me. But you said there was something off to starboard that looks good? Yeah, I was looking at these two piles that, you know, seeing right. that those might be loose, okay. either one on top of another, but they look pretty crumbly. Look a little fresh. Crumbly. I'm just going to keep ship moves happening. It's no, flat. flat one, yeah. do flat. Okay. No. Um, I would say we we'll think it's going to get really steep? Yeah. Uh, we'll start getting a little steeper in 80 meters. Yeah, I think we can move on. I'll do a uh, smaller if, move. If, unless you want to try but grabbing that one. If not, no worries. This one right here? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, no worries, no worries. You can move on, move along if you'd like. It's a nice little feature here, just like the end of a lava flow coming out of the pillow basalt. Are you trying for the rock that's right underneath you? No, he said we could move on. Okay, yeah. great. Um, yeah. Okay, that's moving on. Sam, I will I will think about that in just a second. Rudder. Um you see all that crust there? It yeah. looks like yeah, the ship looks is like stopping. Crust. The ship is stopping. crust. Yeah, it does. And then on underneath you have this. I don't know if it hasn't crusted uh, up moving yet. What they call it, uh, accumulation of this uh, sediment and rubble when it, like a conglomerate or yeah. a breccia? Breccia. Breccia, that's it. You breccia. Yeah, breccia. So we have been seeing a few sea stars on this dive. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Steve, can you tell us, like, what is the deepest that we have seen sea stars? Is there a limit? Uh, Before we go we into that have. question, uh -huh. yeah. can I uh, chat through Steve with you on um, um, our Steve and Nick about our plan here? Yeah. That's up. So. Uh, we're kind of getting up to this slope here, and then we'll plateau and head over to waypoint four. Is our goal at this point to collect rocks along the way or to move quickly? Um, and I ask that because with the depth right now and the way the hydraulics are behaving, um, we're going to need to be a little more conservative about our ship moves, um, which will will be kind of like a move stop move stop if we want to be collecting rocks along the way uh yeah i mean i i, I think we'll probably collect rocks but I, I don't see anything in the immediate area although this one uh this one looks really nice yeah, yeah it does it's, it's uh -huh. it does square very nice huh? it's all square it's all angular right it is all angular okay well let's give it a go total angular complete angles. rock <laughs> yeah it's like a rubik's cube hey, it's a crap so one. maybe if we get a sample here we can scoot up the slope after this without having okay. to do much stop start that would work let's yeah. see how this looks just go for it uh i can't really stay on the yeah no worries i'm gonna have to just fly it stick lock's gonna wander off in some direction i 
Look nice. at that. Wow. What is that grab? Snag. Oh my nice. god. That's a pro. That was such a good grab. That Look at the shape so on that. That's I cool. love it. That cool. Angular. So Tim. angular. So Interestingly, so uh, one of the most angular rocks we've collected <laughs> up <laughs> on NA-137 <laughs> last year. Uh, we have high hopes when we cut that one open, Karen. Uh, is, that a, is that a five star? Highlight right there. It's a five yeah, star rock. So. It's a five, five star, star rock. I'll, I'll tell you tomorrow rock. when we cut it open. I'm uh, not sure why only the rock. biology gets five stars. Yeah. So. Uh, what do you think the size on that is? Uh, yeah, 15. 15? Yeah. So it was 105. Oh, thanks. And when, uh, I can tell you the box whenever you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. What box would you like? In? Um, the starboard F, the big one on the last on the back. Okay, the oh, sorry. starboard it was side. Too early. Okay, I will do. Um, yeah, when it, that's the official time. Yeah, when it goes onto the ROV. You never know. Yeah. Well, you know, samples tumble out for all reasons at all times. So, Steve, it sounds like I'm gonna put you in the sample if that's right. With this rock, we can. Uh, Head up that slope then? With yeah, I think we can move up the slope without okay, stopping too much. Okay, I'll put in a move. Thanks. Bridge now. And we can try for on the fly samples. Um, sure. It's just we uh, may not do be successful. Five zero meters, uh, one three zero, please. So I was saying that the best rock the best looking rock we ever sampled on NA-137 and the Line Islands, um, Northern Line Island Seamounts, not far from here actually, was completely, it was a block. It was a giant block. And we cut it open or broke it open and it was mud. Oh. Mud, oh. mud, mud, a giant <laughs> square of mud. Really? Wow. Really? Yeah. yeah. And How coated, can that be? Coated yeah. in crust. Yeah. What can you learn from that? <laughs> like, what does that mean? <laughs> that mud can hold a square shape. Yeah. I mean, mudstone is, is something that can lithify over time. It is lithify becoming a square? <laughs> becoming a cube? <laughs> yeah, lithify is just a process of uh, any type of sediment undergoing the chemical and physical uh, prop, uh, changes called diagenesis. Uh, those are the actual changes that... Uh, What's that? It, okay. Uh, create a do this sedimentary once more rock. Just in case it works this time. Cool. Diagenesis. Uh, yeah. Diagenesis is kind of like the, the 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 actual changes that go in the chemical changes, um, and then lithification is just the cementation and compaction of the rock into an actual. So diagenesis Shape. first, then lithification. Okay. Somebody's wondering, how far did we travel from Tuesday's dive site? Tuesday? What day is Tuesday? Uh, today is Thursday. I guess our last dive? Yes. Yeah. T minus three days till ice cream? Yeah, right. Oh my gosh, I can't I wait. I think, um, the only yeah, so, so that would be the last dive. Uh, we traveled about 100, uh, 12, 100, oh, it was about 12 or 13 hours. To get there, from uh, to get here from there. So what's that in uh, nautical miles? 130. Yeah, uh, if we were in a straight line, but great circles. We may not have been. <laughs> right. Here, I can find out. Mm -hmm. If only we had a map. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> if only we had a mapper. If only. Hello, coral. Wow, it's a long coral. Whoa. Super long bamboo. Can we zoom maybe here? Yes. Ready for zoom? Yeah, specifically at that spot. Specifically. Yeah, okay. so here. 
There. Okay. Okay. Go back. Wired, yeah. Down, down, RV. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll keep circling it so I have a <laughs> reference. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, clear for zoom. Did you spot something specific again, Steve? No, I just there's a high density of, of uh, tissue there. I want to figure out what's going on, if there's you know, maybe some sort of parasite or irritant or associate, but it doesn't look like that. Okay. All clear. Okay. okay. Move it off. We have not seen very many associates. I don't think we've seen a single associate so far this dive, have we? Um, some of the Chrysogorgia geniculata colonies had associates inside them. Uh, squat lobsters and shrimp. Um, Must have been at dinner when we saw those. Yep, and we saw <coughs> what else? Um, yeah, it, it's been sparse, certainly for uh, associated animals. Yeah. Steve, what was your guess for the? Uh, distance from our last dive site? Uh, 129 nautical miles. Yeah, it was 135. Wow, that's really good. It was that curvature of the Earth that got you. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. when you when you correct for parallax uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> and so on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the mapper, you know, Went for go get a cup of coffee and veered <laughs> off the line. You know, that happens. <laughs> Somebody is curious about that worm from the last dive. They're wondering, did, uh, did it make um, it back? Yes. yes. Yes, it did. And we were all very happy. Multiple worms. Yeah, did, did you say there was two? Multiple, yeah, multiple worms multiple. on that colony. Multiple. Yeah, so we wow. preserved some tissue and formalin and and other in ethanol, so we can do it in a variety of different um, taxonomic analyses on them. So, great um, find. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the Bathypathies collection was uh, superb, front row. Clear to zoom when you're happy. Thanks, Steve. A good question. Welcome on. Take that, Bathypathies. Yeah. <laughs> Take that. Yeah. So this is this is a, a bamboo coral stalk, similar probably to the one that we just saw, but it has an actinoscyphia anemone at the top, um, or also known as a flytrap anemone. Flytrap. Cool. They're a pretty cosmopolitan um, group. They're very wide, widely ranged, wide ranging. So we don't often collect them because they can be found uh, all over the Pacific. It's not it always one species, but they're similar enough. What does it mean to be cosmopolitan if you're coral? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so cosmo, I mean, it just means, you know, worldwide, oh, effectively. Nice. Oh, okay. Nice copy. <laughs> Contemporary. Yeah. Continental. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Prefers the finer things. <laughs> It's so okay. good. It looks like segmented symphony. bone, like a yeah. like it has joints. Yeah, yeah. The, that's the bamboo coral skeleton underneath. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So it looks like we're coming up to the slope. Okay. Are um. we good to make another move? Uh, yeah. RV? I'm happy. Yeah. If it starts to get steep, um, just uh, zero your z bias. Um, Bridge now. You can just use this button here. Okay. Um, and that'll allow you to come up a lot uh, faster. Five zero meters, one three uh, zero. It just gets rid of your trim real fast. Oh, okay, nice. Because uh, cool. otherwise, you're always gonna have ha have your trim the amount the amount of vertical you can use be reduced by the amount that your trim is. Okay. Um, how big a move was that, Samantha? It was five zero meters. I can okay. reduce if you're. If you have your yeah, I don't know. We'll see what we see. Yeah. Eventually, we'll um, 
I, we, we don't want to end up in the middle of this plateau that's on the top of this uh, kind of thing that juts out into the slope here. So eventually we'll start moving eastward again. I guess maybe when we kind of crest the top of this uh, ah. feature. Okay, you don't want to go on the plateau. No, we don't want. We don't want to. We don't want to go in the middle of the plateau. We just going to skirt maybe okay. around where around the the, the con the yeah the the center contour is. Yeah, right there. Okay. Yeah, and then straight up to four. Rad, rad. Um. Yeah, elevation or altitude wise, this should be. Well, according to the bathy, it should be like less than 100 meters. Um, Incline here. Really slope. Interesting rock. Yeah, it is. Or I guess a, is that a rock or a boulder? <laughs> uh, yes, both would. Uh, can we look here, both actually. Description. Yes. There's a spot right there. The Come kind around. Of white dot. The white dot. Yeah. Got it. I'll keep circling it. Yeah. Coming down. Is that <laughs> sediment? I don't know. I think it's something living, but I just want to double check because it looks like it's clearing a trace. Um, in the sediment on the rock. Like a little waterfall effect almost. Clear to zoom. Oh my god. Huh. This smaller circle here? Yeah, underneath. Yeah. Uh, at the bottom of the frame. Yeah, Could like that be a kite? Can, can we move closer in a... Uh, yeah. yeah, I can do. Can you zoom out, please? I, th I think yep. it might be a sponge, but it looks just looks odd. Living? Uh, unclear. This is not a collection target. I just wanted to get a better look at it, just in case you were getting nervous. No. <laughs> We're not yeah. nervous. Okay. Cool as a cucumber. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure, it's not part of the rock. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's part of the rock. <laughs> what? <laughs> like a rind almost. It could be. All right. It's like there's another one over. All right. We can go, go okay. move on. Yeah. Well, it looked oddly circular and uh, not a lot of sediment around there, so I'm not sure if it was part of the rock or something else. Better to good to better, better and good to check. Yes. And Steve. sometimes poke it with a stick. <laughs> sometimes poke it with, yeah. Right. Uh, flytrap anemone, do they, are they planktivorous or do they eat whole? It's a good I question. I would imagine they're probably eating food that's pretty small. Uh, but maybe if there was a fish that came along, a midwater fish that wandered too close to the seafloor, might crap a meal of that. Anemones uh, have been known to capture fish that drift too close to the bottom and ingest them whole. Well, wow. yep. I mean, it, and I mean, if you've seen some of what the anemones do on the west coast, you'd be afraid too. Yeah, those west coast anemones. <laughs> yeah, they they eat whole birds. I'm not kidding. Oh. What? How? Yeah. How you haven't that? seen that photo of the anemone? How do they get their little no. tentacles on a bird? The, the bird was in Careful. the water and was but. probably dead already. Oh, okay. Uh, well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't have to tell that part of the story. Well, <laughs> I, I, getting the bird into the enemy tentacles is a really hard thing to do uh, if it's not already kind of, yeah. So I imagine it's kind of close to the surface of the uh, 
Yeah, they're, they're tide pools. Yeah. You said there's video footage of it? I think there's a photo floating there's around the internet photos, somewhere. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, yeah, there is something there. Yep. Just a Let's quick zoom on that. Still cam. Yeah, we'll stop too. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's uh, our good f good friend, uh, Romila Gorgia Militaris. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We oh, go yeah. way back. First, first name basis. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Call him Remy. Remy. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds a lot better than Pluro, which it's, it was its old name. Mm. Pluro Gorgia. And it was recently recently revised. Why'd they change it? Um, because it one? didn't belong to that family yeah, anymore. To the right of the, uh, oh, yep. Yikes. There's a. Uh, we look here. Yes. Specifically at the. What's in this bottle brush colony on the left? Okay. Well, I hope it's. Happy with its new family. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's where it belongs. Yeah. <laughs> Clear to zoom. What do you got in there? I see so much show she had. Yeah. It's uh, some sort of bottle brush coral. Prob uh, tough to say what it is, but there's probably, uh, well, there's definitely a Europe. Europtychus uh, squat lobster in there somewhere. Doctor. And uh, an Ophiocanthid brittle star. Okay. All right, that's okay. good enough. Let's get ahead for a little bit. So somebody in the chat noticed that uh, Hercules has six gray tubes on its side. What are those for? Um, yeah, so Hercules has several different ways of sampling and collecting items, whether it be rocks or biological samples. Uh, those six gray tubes specifically. Thank you, Logan. Uh, you can see those clearer on uh, channel three. Are those the uh, Niskin bottles? Or are those something else? I think they're talking about the gray tubes on the on the port side. Those, oh, uh, that's are the we? Starboard, okay. uh, yeah, let's look at those as well. Starboard cam. But yeah, those are Niskin bottles, and they're not getting a lot of action this dive. Um, they're for sampling water, uh, typically associated with high density um, deep water coral and maybe sponge communities, but primarily uh, sampling water around deep water coral communities that we might want to understand the environmental DNA profile of. And um, we haven't seen densities that are all that high um, on this dive. Uh, so we're kind of holding them in reserve. I suspect you know, as we enter, enter the last, last watch or last watch and a half of this dive, it should pick up a little bit. But uh, we, uh, we're aiming to collect a, a range of environmental DNA samples across the, the landscape of seamounts, both in high density communities, but also in areas where we don't see a lot of coral animals, just to do some comparisons. But we've collected quite a number of eDNA samples so far. I think we are up to uh, something around maybe 20, 15 to 20 so far across our first five dives. Nice. So again, when we're talking about environmental uh, DNA, can we? What is that? Um, that should keep moving right now. Okay. <laughs> Sorry to say. <laughs> it's a sea cucumber. Oh, I hate to pass those up. Um, but yeah, environmental DNA is the DNA that is naturally shed by the living organisms within the area. So Another you can one think of, of it things. as dead skin cells, dandruff, whatever. Um, that the uh, whatever is naturally shed from the organism. And that is a very non-invasive way to collect a profile of what kinds of things are living down here. And, you know, in a similar way, you might have noticed that there's all these white specks floating around in the water where we're diving, and that is what's known as marine snow. Okay, plenty of coins in the zoom bank now. <laughs> all right. It's hard to tell sometimes whether we're like, gonna fall behind and need to scramble upslope 
or yeah. or what? Um, I'll take a look, quick look at this uh, black coral here. Clear to zoom. Now there are these splotches on the rock that bother me. Something was eating there. What do you think could have been eating there? Something with uh, yeah, probably a deposit feeder like a sea cucumber or maybe um, uh, a mollusk of, of some type that was rasping at the at the surface of the sediment, trying to scrape energy in the form of maybe biofilms or uh, another alternate pathies, another species that I think might be the first for the dive. Uh, typical of the assemblage we're moving up into that upper uh, that 2,000 meter assemblage. All right. Looks like no one's home on this one. Okay. Um, yeah, so what was I saying? Uh, animals that rasp at the seafloor trying to scrape biofilms or maybe marine snow that settles to the seafloor uh, and they, they often leave mucus trails uh, and the sedimentation rate is so low here such that you can tell where animals have been living or, or feeding in the past recent history, which actually could be years yeah and that might be a little compounded by the slope that we're seeing right now we'd see even less sedimentation right uh, than in other areas right Yeah, what we're going to do next is actually move more eastward. Um, and I think if we do that now, we'll swing Atlanta at the same time. Okay, so I wish yeah. we could go down this hill then. Uh, no, oh, well, it looks like that, doesn't it? Because if I'm trying to get closer to Atlanta, then I will have to, if Atlanta just goes here. Yeah, yeah. You're so gonna far on my yes, yours. Uh, seems good to me. You want to uh, whatever. That's what happens if we do a zero nine zero. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this this is sort of lateraling along that slope, so I guess that makes the most sense. Just keep doing what we're doing. Yeah, this is this looks good. Yeah. Yeah, going down slope's not fun. Another colony of Ramula Gorgia seems to be pretty prominent here. Uh, can we zoom in on the base of that if we have time? Yeah, let's check some discoloration. I'm wondering if there's something living on it. Good for zoom. Oh, yep, some ophiocanthid uh, brittle stars. What was this species of coral? Uh, Romula gorgia militaris. I'll write it in. Good. Okay. Thanks for the zoom. Okay. Okay. Uh, I will put that zero nine zero move in. Sorry, say again. Uh, I'll put in the zero nine zero move if you're uh, ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, okay, so you. No, no, no. I'm like, I just want to go where you guys want to go. So our current depth is two thousand eight hundred and nine. Or excuse me, two thousand eight hundred and forty nine meters, or about nine thousand three hundred and forty five feet and the water temperature 
where Hercules is, is about 1.7 degrees Celsius. Or if you're wondering what that is in Fahrenheit, that's about 35. Again, this is the deepest dive that we have done so far this cruise, an A-153, and we are currently taking a look at an unnamed seamount. This is Site 9, and we are uh, exploring Johnston Atoll region, looking for the biology as well as the, ge the geological makeup of around this region. So if you have any questions for us, please do feel free to reach out in the chat if you have any comments, do the same thing. If you have questions about what is it like living on a ship, we've been on this ship for uh, almost two weeks now, a little bit longer. I'm losing concept of time. We, we <laughs> most of us got here on um, August 31st and we've been on this ship ever since. It's a really awesome sea cucumber <laughs> right there. We really have lost sense of time. Yeah, not August 31st, <laughs> yeah. July 31st, excuse me. <laughs> it's okay. We're all in the same boat. Yeah. <laughs> 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 nice. I don't think we've seen a sea cucumber that color before. At least. Yeah, I think this I is still a Hansenotheria. It's a, a, a sea cucumber that's color variable, uh, red or purple. We've seen both colors, I think, this dive. But the morphology is consistent with, with that genus. Last year, we sampled of many, many, many sea cucumbers from Johnson Atoll because uh, there was a graduate student now who was uh, taking some subsamples for uh, food web analysis of deep benthic and abyssal environments. OK, come on, please. I don't think the auto, yeah, I think the manual, manually focus. The autofocus I've noticed is kind of reliable. Cool. All right. Somebody's curious about what are our favorite and least favorite things about living on the ship. Excellent question. Uh, my favorite is being around the ocean 24/7. But that was also kind of my least favorite for the first few days, too, because I did get a little bit uh, seasick. I, it wasn't to the point of, like, throwing up, but just definitely feeling uncomfortable. So, yeah, it was kind of like a bittersweet situation. So I love, love, love the ocean. But, yeah, the first few days on this ship, for me, were a little bit rough. I don't know if anybody else wants to talk about your favorite or least favorite thing. I'd probably agree with you on my least favorite as being uh, those first few days trying to adjust to uh, to the uh, pitch and roll, um, especially around the uh, time we were running around from the hurricane where we had a nice <laughs> swell. Um, definitely felt it and wasn't 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 a hundred percent, but um, the hurricane thing honestly feels like that was three months ago. Yeah, that is bananas. But uh, my favorite part is definitely being in the control van and just being able to see all the amazing technology and uh, okay for Zoom. being around all these great people. Yeah, definitely the people are amazing. All right, another Brissingen. I think that's the most cool. fanned out I've seen a Brissingen before. Very beautiful. One of my brothers in the chat, hi Brian, is wondering if we've seen any orca. <laughs> so if anyone knows me, they know I'm very uh, obsessed with whales, and I really, really, really love killer whales, orcas. Um, have not seen any. I doubt we'll see any, but I mean, there are tropical orcas, so who knows? We did see a shark. Yeah, somebody saw a shark the other day. Um, we saw some sea turtles and hmm. some, yeah, some dolphins as we were leaving Oahu to come out to where we are now, but since then, zero marine mammals.
Another Amelogorgia colony. It seems to be the only thing on this slope. This and these unbranched bamboos. Is it uncomfortable going lateral across the slope like this? Um, it's just that, like, I can't get so close because, like, the starboard side of my ROV hits. I can't get, like, down, you know, Yeah. in order to get, like, a, a really nice close-up shot. But um, All right. Well, I mean, either after this move uh, is over, which I think it almost is, we can go a little bit more, a little bit more perpendicular. Uh, make a little bit more upslope progress. Nav, does that sound good? Okay. Uh, you're thinking? Just a little bit more south of, of east. South of east, better, so yeah. Yeah, okay. exactly. It will take us into that little plateau, but. That's fine, a little bit, it's fine. Okay, um, we've gone about 200 meters uh, since our last rock collection. Are we interested in another one? Well, um, the ship will be settling out shortly, or would you like to keep moving? Anything look uh, particularly attractive here? Uh, yeah. It's uh, kind, of, kind of hard to tell at this zoom level. Maybe we could zoom in just a little bit. See how big these rocks really are. Clear for zoom. Uh, that one there. That rock? Yeah. Okay. Is that possible? Could you zoom out, please? Okay. Mm uh, all right. I'll come. These look nice, too. Two big blocks in the middle of that sand patch. Yeah. I'll just bring my heading to, to port so that we're not going to crush this thing. What do we have for a uh, box capacity? Well, every box has a rock in it, except for the forward Omega. Okay. Let's see what, what kind of size we get. And the ship has stopped. But we'll have a swing. Okay, thanks. I hope I haven't made this too difficult for you. <laughs> but I think, maybe, are we steady? I think that one close to the bottom would be good. I'm not sure if that's the same rock I originally was looking at. That was the one you originally circled. It's the same one? That one. No, you, you originally circled this one. So okay. this, is yeah. that the one you're talking about? Okay. Uh, I was talking about this one here. Okay. Okay, I'm going to bring the craft valve up. Okay. Spot of the uh, debris. Oh, I'm from landing. Somebody is wondering about the most unique or surprising thing that we've seen so far. And uh, I don't know about you all, but for me it was the Dumbo octopus. Um, <laughs> yeah. How could it not be? <laughs> yeah. It was just breathtaking. So that was our last dive. Can you circle again for me? Certainly. Uh, on Tuesday, we saw I three. They got too far away. I'm sorry. We saw three double octo here. octopuses, octopi. Um, octopuses. Can you give me a zoom? Octopuses. Just a half zoom, because we'll probably end up picking up video. Oh, you can't hear me. Give me a zoom. The one that like took my breath away, though, was the cer Um uh, Come out just a little bit so I can see. It looked humongous, and that was the 
the control van was just in love with seeing that. So definitely the most surprising and amazing thing that we've seen so far on this uh, expedition. But we still have some more dive nice. to go. Hold on. Uh, can we put also put that in F, I think? I mean, the, the first rock is here. We can make a little drawing. It's right in, sitting right in the back. Okay. We could put this one in the front. That's, that so helps us identify the two. Yeah, this is 106. It looks like the pressure didn't dive as far. Looks like you got two, two nice. there, I think. Two for one. Two for one. Two for oh, one. nice. <laughs> one little one. I didn't see the pressure go below like 1500 that whole time. In that case. Yeah, yeah. Did you see that? I mean, I think we should still yeah. take them both. Okay. Would uh, they be two different samples or uh, subsample? I think I think we should probably call them one sample. Okay. Okay. You ready to stow? Yep. Yeah. Um, can you go wide video? Oh, you already are wide. Okay. Just got the arm in a crazy place. Yeah, so for our uh, chat, we had a view of Ciro toothis. That is a type of Dumbo octopus. So that is spelled C-I-R-R-O-T-E-U-T-H-I-S, Ciro toothis. That's a spelling bee word if I've ever heard one. Yeah. So, starboard, back, right, uh, F, the bigger one. Okay, uh, E or F or F. whichever. One yeah, one. the farthest aft, the one that you just uh, put the last sample in. make a note that the last sample uh, kind of fell in the back side of that box, so it's further aft. And then the sample will be on top of it and just plop down to the front. So the, the front two rocks, the forward two rocks in F are going to be that one sample, mm -hmm. and the one in the back is going to be the previous sample. Mm -hmm. And what's the sample number for these two? 106. 106. Thank you. Two for one. Come on. Yeah, hopefully uh, should provide some interesting comparison in two rocks, same sure. site. Yeah. You know, maybe that one of them's okay, useful. I'm going back to dive salvo. Okay, thanks. Lovely. All right, so we're getting some more questions. Um, so it was a Dumbo octopus, D-U-M-B-O. Um, yeah, you, you can Google those, and they are very, very, very cool. Um, I'm guessing that we're going to have some highlights coming out very soon of the ones that we saw on that uh, previous dive. But again, that's a Dumbo octopus, D-U-M-B-O. And then another question, somebody is wondering about sea anemones. Are they edible? And has anybody in this control van ever eaten sea anemone? Mm. <laughs> That's a hard no from Nick. Nope. <laughs> well, actually, no. Uh, I have eaten, so in some tinafores, there are parasitic anemone larvae uh, that parasitize tinafores. And so I guess, yes, inadvertently, I've eaten sea anemones. Ooh. Why have you been eating tuna pork? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Because you can. What did it taste like? Or was sea it just water? like jelly? It, yeah. it tastes yeah, like seawater sea water sea jelly? Just yeah. like in the lab, just for science? No, <laughs> not in the lab. <laughs> for science. Can't, just can't snacks. Eat in the lab. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No eating in the lab. <laughs> hey. No eating in the lab. Especially the samples. I, yeah, I definitely feel like we need more context. I feel like it was a... It was a joke, but I went to a summer camp where... Uh